Hi guys, this is 7.2, module 7.2, isosceles and equilateral triangles. So our central question is what are the special relationships among angles and sides in isosceles and equilateral triangles? Uh, shortest answer possible basically is in an isosceles triangle, the angles opposite of the congruent sides are congruent. So here's your isosceles triangle. I'm gonna try to draw it as best I can. You got your two congruent sides. Well, guess what? Their angles opposite of each other are also congruent. Now, in an equilateral triangle, all the sides and angles are congruent. Um, each angle measure angle measuring uh, 60 degrees. So basically, you have an equilateral triangle. All their sides are the same. All their angles are the same. And if all their angles are the same, well, they have to be 60 degrees each because we all know that the sum of all interior angles of a triangle have to be 180. And 360s are the only ones that will work, the only measurements that will work. All right, so investigating isosceles triangles. An isosceles triangle is with at least two congruent sides. One, two, very nice. Uh, the congruent sides are called the legs of the triangle. So again, legs, the ones I just marked. And the angle formed by the legs is the vertex angle. All right, so the angle formed by those two legs is the top guy right here. Okay, that's the vertex angle. Now the side opposite of the vertex angle is the base because it's all about that base, about that base. All right, so again, it's on the opposite side. Something to note there, okay? It's always on the opposite of the vertex angle. Now, the angles that have the base and the side are the base angles. And that's these guys right here, which with isosceles triangles are always congruent to one another. All right, so isosceles triangle theorem, basically if two sides of a triangle are congruent, and the two angles opposite of the sides are congruent, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and look at the proof for it real quick. Basically, it's given to us that AB is congruent to AC, so this guy is congruent to this guy or that side. And then we just have to prove that angle B is gonna be congruent to angle C. All right, that's what they're looking for. So uh, BA is congruent to CA, that was given. Now angle A is congruent to angle A, so angle A is congruent to itself, and that's because of the reflexive property. All right, now CA is congruent to BA, that's the symmetric property of equality. All right, because basically what they're doing, they're, they're pretending, if you will, this side is just perfectly symmetrical, therefore the reflexive can be applied. So we're still kind of talking about uh, rigid motion reflection still. All right, so triangle BAC is congruent to CAB, and that is actually because of angle, uh, or I'm sorry, not angle side angle, Silly me. What do we have so far? Again, we don't have angle B and angle C yet, but what do we have? Okay, look at it. What do we have? We got a side here from AB. We got an angle here from the reflexive property. And this side is, you know, also congruent. Hey, this is side angle side, triangle congruency. And that is a electronic pin, that uh, touch screen or software that just makes my life just so much more enjoyable. Triangle congruency theorem. All right, good news. If these two triangle, if this triangle is congruent to itself, basically, then we know that the little parts of the same larger part are congruent. So angle B is congruent to angle C because the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, CPCTC. All right, now the converse is basically just this. Um, they only give you the two sides or the two angles, and then we have to prove that these two sides are the same. 
Now we do know that ABC is, con or I'm sorry, this angle ABC, oops, sorry, silly me, I'm thinking of the last proof. ABC is congruent to ACB and that was given. They, they told us it right here, okay? And then they say the reflexive property of congruence. Um, and that's probably gonna be here. They're probably trying to give us BC. So BC is congruent to itself or CB um, because of the reflexive property of congruence. It's sharing the same line type deal. So if that's the case, um, we have, let's see, a, now they're talking about ABC being congruent to ACB. I'm trying to be strategic here. And well, we got this side here, we got this angle here, we got this other angle. Oh, basically those triangles. So we're talking about ABC and CAB, okay. Those two triangles are congruent because of angle side angle triangle congruency theorem. All right, a little confusing I know because we're talking about the same triangle, we're just labeling it different. So instead of triangle ABC, it's also triangle CAB. So we're really still playing with the same triangle. All right, so don't get too freaked out. Now AB is congruent to AC um, because of CPC TC. They say that these two triangles are congruent, um, you know, and it's basically the same triangle. So since the same triangle is same, same, basically every little part of the same triangles are going to be congruent because of CPC TC. All right, now moving on, investigating isosceles triangles. Now in equilateral triangles, a triangle with three congruent sides. So we got AB is congruent to AC and AC is congruent to BC and basically all three sides are gonna be congruent for sure. All right, now um, an equal uh, equangular triangle, say that word 10 times fast, is a triangle with three congruent angles. So basically this guy is the same as this guy and same as this guy. Okay, and that's basically the equilateral triangle theorem in general. Basically, if a triangle is equilateral, then it is uh, equangular. Basically, if you are an equilateral triangle, all your angles are going to be the same. And basically, again, just to reiterate, that means this guy is 60 degrees, this guy is 60 degrees, and this angle is 60 degrees. Thank you, triangle sum theorem. All right, so proving the equilateral triangle theorem. So I'm just gonna brush by these as fast as I can. Silly little fill in the blanks. Um, given AB is congruent to AC and BC, basically their sides are the same. We have to prove that these angles are the same. So given that AB is congruent to AC, we know that angle B is gonna be congruent to angle C. And that's because of the isosceles um, triangle theorem. Okay, because we're already told these two guys are the same and looking back at isosceles triangle theorems, I mean, we don't know about, you know, angle uh, BAC yet, but it's one of those things where we already learned about the isosceles triangle theorem and we can apply it here right now to actually prove equilateral triangle theorem. So it is also known that angle A is congruent to angle B by the isosceles triangle theorem, which is already there since, um, since what? Since that was already given? I, this is the one thing I just can't stand about filling the blank. All right, so let's see. Angle A is congruent to angle B. Okay. Since, um, huh. Well, if all the sides are the same, all the angles have to be the same. Hmm. Finally, ABC is by the property of. Conf oh, let's see. This is definitely the transitive property. All right. I realized what they were doing here. It, I actually spent more of my energy trying to figure out the, what they wanted for the fill in the blank. 
as opposed to the actual proof. All right, so triangle A, or I'm sorry, angle A is congruent to angle B, and that's because of the isosceles triangle theorem. Now, since B is congruent to C, again, we already talked about that earlier, um, A is congruent to C, okay? So if this guy is the same as this guy and this guy is the same or congruent to that guy, well, then isn't this guy gonna be congruent to that guy? That's the transitive property, okay? So finally, AB is congruent to, I'm sorry, angle A is congruent to angle B and, and it's congruent to angle C. And this is by the um, ooh, transitive. I have no idea what these guys, maybe that's a transitive property or a reflexive property of congruence. I think that's reflexive property. Fill in the blank is one of my least favorite things about the book, it truly is. All right, enough with me complaining, let's go. So proving the converse of the equilateral triangle theorem. So basically they tell us all these angles are congruent. We have to prove all the sides are the same or congruent. Um, so because angle B is congruent to angle C, okay, um, then we know that AB has to be congruent to AC. And that's again by the isosceles triangle theorem. Okay, so again, we're using the old theorem for another ob another different type of triangle uh, to solve this. All right, so AC is congruent to BC. Um, AC is congruent to BC by the converse of an isosceles triangle theorem because angle a is congruent to angle B. That was already given to us up here. Um, thus, by the transitive property of congruence. Oops, see, I think that was that one. All right, good. Okay. Transitive, I'm talking about the last one, last proof. All right, by the transitive property of congruence, uh, blank, and therefore blank. Okay, so basically they're just trying to say, um, Angle A is going to be, again, angle A is congruent to angle B, therefore angle A has to be congruent to the other angle, angle C, and therefore all their sides have to be the same um, for that to happen, all right? All right, so finally, let's to the meaty part. This is the part with uh, the homework aspect of things, okay? We're using this idea of the properties of isosceles and equilateral triangles. So we're gonna find um, basically the indicated measures. Now we are told that this guy right here is an isosceles triangle, okay? So bear with me. We know that all their sides have to be congruent. So we know that side AC needs to be congruent to, my pen is really flaring up right now. That is very heartbreaking. AC is congruent to BC. Okay, and that's because of an equilateral triangle. All the sides have to be congruent. And AC is written as 6X minus five, which should be equal to BC, which is represented as 4X plus seven with that algebraic expression. All right, so let's use a subtraction property. And then after the subtraction property, I'm gonna go ahead and do step-by-step. Step. These cancel out, I got two X minus five. Looks like we're gonna have to use the addition property to work on isolating our variable. Division property and x equals six. Very nice. All right, so your turn. Um, find angle P. Um, this one is uh, surprisingly just going to be an isosceles triangle. Um, actually, you know what? Um, that's funny. Um, if you want, you can go ahead and solve for x. 
but for now we're going to just play this off as it being this triangle being um let's see you know what let's make this interesting um this is an isosceles triangle all right not an equilateral so we don't know if angle p is going to be congruent to angle q or r but we do know technically there's another 3x plus 3 for angle QPR. So we all know that all three of these angles should add up to 180. So that's my hint. And um, solve for x. And then plug it back in to find for angle P. Thank you, guys. And have a wonderful day. If you have any questions, let me know.